Welcome back, everybody. Um, so in this video, we're going to be analyzing the data we collected from Google Forms. So as I mentioned last time, uh, when you have a, a survey that you've designed, let me go back to this previous one. You can send it out to your friends and family by clicking the send button and then clicking on this link icon and sending either this address or you can click shorten URL and select this address and you basically copy and paste it to Twitter and eventually some people respond and you get these responses. So I've got I've received 29 responses to this survey and while Google gives me a summary of the results that are somewhat useful um, for this project we want to use Excel and um, deploy some of the knowledge that we learned earlier in the class about you know, making pivot tables and uh, other things like that. So I'm going to open the Google Worksheet by clicking that green icon and I'm going to save my file or download my file in an Excel format. So now I'm going to save and open in Excel. I'm going to enable editing. The very first thing I'm going to do, this is very important because it affects the um, the appearance of, of all the things you're going to do later. So by default, Google includes the entire question as the heading on the on the data sheet. So we want to uh, go up here to this first, and that, that would take up a lot of unnecessary space and uh, make things a little funny looking. So typically when you see a, a chart, um, you don't see like, how old are you? It says age. Um, so for example, so labels, we typically use abbreviated labels as headings uh, in uh, data sets rather than long drawn out questions. So I'm going to go into this first row and I'm going to replace each of the first row entries with abbreviated um, labels. So I'm going to try to make them all maybe one or two words. Um, I had some additional questions on this one that I didn't have in the last survey. The other thing you might do um, is do a little bit of data cleansing. So um, I have a couple people that for some reason logged in and did not complete all the questions. So I'm just going to simply delete those from my data set. So I'm selecting the entire row, right-clicking and deleting. Um, if you have any, I didn't really have any questions where a lot of people answered things free form that I want to, let's say you ask somebody their major, um, you might want to do a sort by that and then um, kind of manually clean up the the responses that are supposed to be the same. So if I had a uh, column called major and one person put marketing and another person put MKTG, um, you might try to make those all the same. So uh, just so they can be combined in any sort of analysis. But anyway, from this point, we have a data set that we're, I don't do anything with the timestamp, but it, it's not hurting anything. So now I have a data set and I'm ready to begin doing the analysis. So um, at this point, the instructions are pretty similar to what we had in module one with the uh, pivot tables. Um, and each person's analysis is going to be different than mine because you asked different questions, you had a different topic. Um, but in this particular survey, I'm going to start off by um, doing a few pivot tables just to get you started on the demonstration. So I'm going to click insert pivot table on a new worksheet. 
And in the pivot table, I'm going to put the overall satisfaction and the sum value. I'm going pretty fast here because we've already done this before. Um, I'm going to change this from a sum to an average. And then I'm going to put gender in the row. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup here. One thing I always do is format my cells and headings. So um, this makes it look a lot, lot, a lot nicer when you when you do a little, just a little bit of um, formatting. So once I, so now I can see that there's really no difference between the males and the females. Um, I had maybe one person that didn't want to reveal their gender or a couple people. Um, so now I'm going to also insert a, a chart to go along with it. So I'm going to select this pivot chart. And for this one, I'll just pick a, uh, a column chart. I always get rid of this total and put a meaningful label on it. And then I could also put some slicers in. So I'm going to insert slicers for the uh, anything that I want, but um, mostly the demographics like the year and the housing so they can see combinations. And I'll give the sheet a name. Um, if I wanted to, I could make a, a second pivot table that's very similar. Um, let's say I want to put it in the same worksheet, except below. I'll request to begin right there. So I'm just going to do the same thing again, where I'm going to put overall satisfaction and I'm going to change it to an average. And this time, instead of putting gender in the row, I'm going to put year in the row. And of course, I want to apply my formats again. And again, I could insert a chart. That total legend is my pet peeve. I can't stand seeing those. Um, and I could insert slicers again. Since we already have year this time, we could put gender and housing. And maybe to distinguish this one from the other one, I might um, design this one a little bit differently by making uh, things a different color. Okay, so that um, it's not a thing of beauty, but um, you can see how it looks halfway decent. And the slicer should work um, 
to make sure I I have the grand total um, summarized as well. So I want to click the the slicers to just kind of look at my data a little bit. Anyway, um, so looking at the data, you can see that um, seniors, we probably didn't have a lot of seniors taking or graduate students or faculty staff taking it, but freshmen seemed a little less satisfied than sophomores and juniors, at least among the, the data that I collected. Um, so let's look at a different, um, let's say you have some text data. So I'm going to, let's say I want to show the breakdown of the gender um, just to see who took my survey. So I'm going to insert a pivot table on a new worksheet. This time I'm going to put gender in both the sum value and in the row. And that'll give me a uh, account. So now I see how many people took the survey. Um, I had 19 males, six females, and two prefer not to say. So now I could insert a pie chart. I know I did this again in uh, module one. Um, I like to uh, add data labels, and then I like to format the data labels over here um, to show the category name and the percentage, but not the value. We already have the value in the table, so by um, formatting our chart like this, we're, we're able to... Um, Going to give some different information that's shown that isn't shown in the table as well. And uh, that's not too nice looking, but um, it does the job. It's nicer when you don't have a long label so everything can kind of fit in the pie slices. But um, anyway, you could do something similar for housing, um, year in school, that kind of thing, and put it in the same chart. Now you could also have slicers here. So I'm going to call this uh, demographics. And um, if I were completing this, I'm not going to bore you with um, doing everything repeatedly, but um, if I wanted to, I would have maybe three of these on the same sheet. Um, I'll post a, um, a completed link as well to a, uh, a file that is done. So let me show you one more thing. Let's say on the, or two more things. Let's say I wanted to do something with these comments. So I'm just going to um, insert another pivot table in a new worksheet. And I'm going to put those comments in the row. Now we just see a list of them. And now I'm going to put a slicer in. set of slicers. So now um, this gives the user a way to kind of interactively view the comments. So you can see all the comments, but let's see the male comments versus the female comments. Um, or let's see the comments of those that were unsatisfied versus those that were satisfied. No, that one didn't make sense, but anyway, um, 
hopefully you'll have better data than I had. So that's a quick way to get your comments and make them into something kind of interactive and cool. Um, and in the raw data, you can do some simple things. Whoops. Call that comments. In the raw data, you can do simple things like averages. And then once you have the uh, averages, you can make a simple chart out of those just by selecting these labels and these labels and making a bar chart out of it. I sometimes like to uh, move the data to a new worksheet. And if you wanted to do a simple chart, you could um, move these over. I'm going to copy the labels, go to a new worksheet, and paste. And then I'm going to do the same thing with these. Um, I need to paste the values for these. And then if I wanted to, I could do a copy and then a paste special and where's the transpose? The transpose here, I like that. Um, and then I can just remove the original data here. I'm going to delete the cells. And from here, I can just insert a kind of a, a traditional chart. Oops, I need to select the data first. So this is just sort of a nuts and bolts. Um, and maybe that could go along with your demographics as well. Um, one last thing that I want to show you is called a correlation. So we don't need this figure anymore. Um, so suppose that I want to uh, understand what is driving this overall satisfaction. What's most important to, um, if, if Hoff Dining Hall wanted to improve overall satisfaction, should they focus on the food quality, the service, the hours, or the value? In order to determine that, I want to find out which one of these things is correlated with that. Um, so you might have done something like this in stat class, but there's a pretty simple function called, actually I'm going to put it over here, um, equals Corel, and I'm going to pick the satisfaction column. I'm actually going to absolute reference this range, and the reason is because I want to be able to just paste over, and I want to so I want the correlation between food quality and satisfaction, service and satisfaction, hours and satisfaction. So in order to do that, I want to freeze the range associated with overall satisfaction. So I'm going to click my F4s here. And then I'm going to put the comma and select the second range. Oops. Don't know why that didn't work. Oh, I've 
got for some reason I've got an extra range in there. Okay, so um, I scrolled down too far. The uh, to do the correlation function, the number of rows has to be equal. So now that I have this first one done, and there's actually a strong correlation there between food quality and overall satisfaction. I'm going to drag that over to the left, right, to get the others. And now I'm going to do something similar to what I did before. Um, I'm going to start a new worksheet, which I'm going to call correlation. And I'm just going to copy over the data and uh, move it around just like I did before. So I'm going to copy these labels. Try that again. I'm going to start in row B1 this time. And then I'm going to copy the court, the um, values of the correlation. And then uh, I'm going to copy and transpose these. And get rid of the original data. And I'm actually going to make a second copy of that. And I'm going to turn this into a little chart. I'm going to merge and center and call the heading correlation with overall satisfaction. And this one I'm going to um, convert into a conditional format data bar. And I'm going to go into the data bar and I'm going to edit it and I'm going to click on this option that says show bar only. So now I have this kind of cool little um, little chart that shows my satisfaction in kind of a graphical format. So now we can see that food quality is the most important followed by service hours and value. All right, so that gives you an idea. Um, again, your, uh, your data is going to be different than mine. So there's going to be different things that you might have to do. Some of you that have a lot of your data as text labels, you're going to need to do things that are similar to this. Um, you might put some slicers in with it. So if you want to, let's say I, uh, I had like favorite shoe by gender and you had a multiple choice question that was um, like Nike, Adidas, New Balance, um, Under Armour, and you had um, data similar to this, you could um, set it up where favorite shoe is in the row and in the sum value. And then you could put um, a slicer for gender. And then you could see what the percentage of favorite shoes were for males versus females versus other. Um, that's just one example that I see kind of commonly, that students collect a lot of uh, text data, and that's what they have to do to analyze it. So anyway, um, 
it's very common for students to work with me to uh, get me to kind of proof their either their survey or their analysis and give them some tips on what I might do. There's a lot of creative things you could do in your in your um, survey analysis for your final project. So don't hesitate to get in touch with me and set up a um, either come into my office or um, set up a, a, a Google Hangout session where we can look at your survey results and uh, come up with some good ideas for analyzing, analyzing it so you can do as well as possible. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Thank you.